you probably worked out by now. I'm back in Winchester and obviously I'm not here to do the South Downs Way because I've done it. So today we're starting St Swithin's Way. I'm hoping there's one on the other side of this sign. No. Okay, interesting. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be long here. Executive decision, it's long here. Right. So while we're doing the boring bit, exactly why am I here? So, St Swithin's Way is a 34 mile, 55 kilometre path between Winchester and Farnham. And uh, if you'll know, if you've watched my South Downs Way video, you will know that that's where the South Downs Way starts, in Winchester. So St Swithin's Way effectively joins up the two ends of the South Downs Way and the North Downs Way. So runs from Winchester to Farnham, or Farnham to Winchester, depending on what direction you're doing it in. I'm going from Winchester, and the main reason I'm doing that is uh, really just to follow the pilgrimage route uh, which obviously heads towards Canterbury so it just feels like a more natural direction to do uh, as well as all the usual stuff around the weather at your back and, and all of that so it uh, generally takes people one to three days to do it I'm aiming to do it in, in two. Um, if we don't quite make it in two, then it won't take much of the third. So that'll be that. And uh, yeah, it's I'm starting it on the the day after uh, the two really hot days we just had, the hottest days ever and it's noticeably cooler today and so much better for walking so much better found it at last i tell you well, this is one tricky path to follow out of Winchester just like the South Downs Way in that respect I, uh, I lost it there as well So, Swithin was uh, 9th century Bishop of Winchester, which in those days was the capital of England, or Wessex, as it probably technically was. And when he died, there were obviously several miracles uh, associated with him, resulting in him becoming a saint. And he, uh, he actually asked to be buried outside the cathedral where the rain would fall on his grave and it's thought that the uh, the 40 day rain thing grew out of this but also from when they moved his body inside the cathedral when it expanded and uh, guess what it rained that day so that's thought to be the origin uh, now the path isn't specifically associated with 
a journey by him or anything like that. It's it's really just a bit of the Pilgrim's Way. So Pilgrim's Way goes from Winchester to Canterbury. Much of that is under under roads now. Um, so this part is actually mostly under the A31, which wouldn't be a fun walk. Um, so from Farnham onwards, the North Downs Way is effectively the modern version of the Pilgrim's Way. And St Swithin's Way just finishes finishes it off really and just fills in that last bit from Winchester to Farnham. Uh, so it's just a nice walk between two named after him. Right, so uh, I'm basically doing this really because I was looking for a very short path and it's a weird one because I'd, I'd not really considered it was worth two days of my time before but it's funny how desperation to get out and do a bit of a bit of backpacking and to have to fit it into quite a small gap focuses the mind and makes a walk you weren't that enamoured of suddenly seem like the right thing to do which is where we've got to so I'm sure it's an absolutely fine walk um, I've mapped it out but I have deliberately not planned it too much so I've focused on just the usual sort of plotting the route you know giving myself the means to calculate the progress and working out where I can stop overnight um, that's about it really Getting a bit noisy now. Got a couple of uh, main roads to cross. I think it's the A34 and the A33, I think it is. So we'll get those done and then hopefully things should quiet down for a bit. So whilst whilst it's not ideal having to cross main roads, and I think I actually go under this one, or maybe not. We'll see in a moment. It's, uh, I don't hate it. It's, it's, uh, in a funny way though, it's sort of reaffirms the walk. So it's, there we go, we've got a tunnel. So it's, it's sort of like passing from civilization into wilder terrain. So that's quite a nice marker. I think also, you know, crossing perpendicular across so many of these main roads, it's just like you're going against the grain, you're going a completely different path to everyday life or society in general. So it's, it's nice. From that perspective as well. It's a bit odd though, the uh, it's all eyes down here. So the uh, the walls are literally looking at me. There we go. Hopefully things will quieten down now.
now the joy of crossing the A33. So, as you saw from that sign, we're sharing the route with a few other trails. So we've got the Allen King Way and the Watercast Trail. And I think we're going to do bits of Itchin Way and various other paths on this. Right. As you can see, I've put the hat on. So, it's starting to get a little bit warm. Not particularly sunny, but you know, do it now before I forget. So, this is the M3, should be the last main road for a while. That's a lot better. So, uh, I'm getting a bit sick of trying to carve a way through stinging nettles and brambles and bits of cow parsley and various other bits of overgrownness. This will do nicely.
using uh, post there with the way marks on. It's never great when post is way marked in such a way that you have to get the map out <laughs> to work it out. I suggest it's not really quite doing its job. So uh, I thought of one moment I was actually going to have to cut over that through there. But there is a footpath through there, apparently. But that's not on the map. So anyway, it's better to be uh, better to be sure of the route. So that noise, traffic noise, is the, the A31 which we've just reached and which will be our companion for most of the walk now. You know, sometimes quite close, sometimes a little bit further off. So uh, it's about two o'clock and I am approaching the outskirts of New Arlesford. Uh, and I sort of reached a bit of a decision point about whether I'm going to bother to stop or just push on. Uh, quite fancy a stop. Um, yeah, quite fancy a stop. Uh, a bit of refreshment, but there was a pub back there in Ovington. Quite busy. I just didn't fancy it. So uh, we'll see. If all else fails, I'll just push on and have an early finish. Yeah, more tarmac but at least I'm nearly done for the day so yeah not greatly enjoyed this afternoon's section really mostly on tarmac um, so it's just felt a bit soggy really but uh, hopefully it will improve tomorrow and be more like this morning was so now I'm uh, walking into Ropley. Hopefully I'll get there while the shop is still open. Um, and then I will basically put loads of cold things down my neck. Uh, 
and then head for the campsite. So the, the campsite is about 2k south of Ropley, a place called Hillcrest Farm. Um, I believe they're expecting me, but you know, if they're not and can't get in there or they're shut up or whatever, we'll have to make a plan B. But there better be a plan B without too much extra distance. So I made it to the shop with a bit to spare actually. So I've just had a nice ice cream. Got myself a few bits and bobs. Uh, cold drink wasn't that cold. So I made up for it by getting myself a nice beer to drink in my tent tonight. Right, so I got to the shop. My watch was showing 24k which was more than I was hoping to do for the holder today. Uh, so, cut about 2k more than the map had showed. And I've got another two to do to the campsite. So, I hate to think how much tomorrow is 32, 33 may actually turn out to be. So, I'll have a little look tonight and see it may be that I'm not gonna make it all tomorrow too hot really to push too hard comfortably I mean, it's supposed to be fun after all so we'll see right now the shower is forecast at five it's going to be about 20 minutes and i'm trying to get to the campsite before that um and then something a lot worse at seven so I definitely want to be camped by then. Uh, yeah. Still. Which been, it's still, in the scheme of things, it's still a relatively prompt finish. So plenty of chill out time. Which would be nice. So that was a bit of a disaster. So I walked 2k out of my way, uphill. And... That place couldn't have looked less like a campsite if it tried. So, no one in. Just dogs barking. Tried a couple of times. I even had a look to see if, you know, there was some obvious sign that there's someone around or... Or even that it was actually okay to just pitch. But, you know what? If, that, if, there was, if they do do camping, they are terrible pitches. And certainly not worth the tenner, I agreed. So, we're on plan B, we're camping wild. into today's 23k walk uh, so I am approaching my best bet for somewhere to stop for the night so let's see how successful I am
morning. It's day two, it's about quarter to seven. And we're underway again. So, um, yeah, so after last night's disappointment, I had to walk a bit further than I planned. And uh, I found somewhere though. I was pretty confident of finding somewhere in that, in that wood I was looking at. Um, just took a bit of hunting really. Uh, wasn't too bad a night. A um, little bit cold in the early hours. And the usual tossing and turning sort of sleep. So, see how it affects us today. Um, I did about 30, just under 31k yesterday with that extra four and a bit detour that I didn't need to do. Um, and that's against a uh, distance I'd measured on the map of 23. So on this one, my distances are proving to be a little bit um, optimistic. Uh, the map says today should be 31. So I'm expecting a couple more to go onto that with twists and turns and just general GPS accuracy. Um, that breaks down reasonably nicely into three sets of 10 or so. And the first 10 will get me to Alton for second breakfast. And then I'll stop, I think, Bentley, I think it's called. I'll aim to stop round about there. Um, a proper stop. Um, one advantage of having to go a bit further yesterday a bit less to do today and obviously for wild camping but it, then um, you tend to make an earlier start than if you're at a campsite so as long as I can keep the pace up I should finish in good time Hello. Ooh. Late spot I picked. So I'm about 38 kilometre mark on the map out of 54. So that's 16 to go, um, which is about the same as what I've already done today again. So it's half past 11, so having a good rest after my early start. I uh, 
stopped in Alton for breakfast, which was nice, just to see it, read a book for a bit, take my mind off things, off my feet mainly, which are hurting a bit because it's just very hard surface. Uh, as you can imagine, the ground's all dried and uh, it's quite hard on the feet, so I'm stopping fairly frequently to just rest them up. So I just stopped for lunch at Bentley Church and there's uh, was a wedding there actually so I sort of found a bench around the around the back out of the way of things had some of the you know, uh, plane I'm not on the old plane distinct bit fiery hurricane-y sort of sound and look to it. Anyway, um, yeah, so I sort of scuffed around the back of the church, just keep out of the way, and uh, yeah, it was good. Nice to have a bit of music. And uh, there's uh, a groundsman cutting a hedge the yeah, bottom of the churchyard, a couple of dogs roaming free. They came over to have a look as well. So, yeah. Right, anyway, so this afternoon, um, I've got about 10k to do. So, probably more like 11, but with twists and turns. Um, and then it's done. So, I'm going to work on the basis of it taking three hours. Maybe a bit more if I do some do stops. I'm obviously not quite sure how I'm going to go this go this afternoon. I've had a good airing of the feet, uh, clean socks, and you do feel the difference. Uh, but I'm sure I'll be hobbling in by the end of it. And well, last section. <laughs> Seen many way marks for a while, not not even as I turned off the road. But I'm pretty sure I'm on the right path. It's marked on the map, and it is the 2022 Aris map. So it must just be a lack of way marks. That's fine. So as you can see, I'm just heading into Farnham. And, oh yeah, we glad to finish actually. Feet are smarting a little bit. It's been uh, another afternoon of quite hard surfaces. Uh, so yeah, so in by my calculations, I've got a couple of K to go. Might be a little fraction more than that. And then I'm gonna find myself a nice cold drink. So, um, my thoughts about about the path it's uh i mean i've done it over two days which has left me with a couple of 30 31 32 kilometer days so about 20 miles a day 
um, adding in all my various twists and turns and diversions. Um, frankly, that feels a little bit much. <laughs> so I think the three-day option is is a nice one, um, even if that third day is a nice short one. Um, I think that would actually just made it a little bit more pleasant. Um, in terms of the walking surface, uh, well, obviously we had quite a lot of time out yesterday, which really hurt. We've had some more this afternoon. Um, this morning we seemed to be all wheat fields, which was was fine. Uh, if you know, <laughs> if we look repetitive. Um, so yeah, it's it's a walk of mainly of farmland. You now you are going to walk through mainly farmland. Quite a lot of it's arable. There are a few sheep fields, a few cows. Um, there's not a huge amount of woodland. There are some patches, but it's not loads. Um, and at this time of year, what patches there are are a, a, a blessed relief. So, so yeah, but it's been a nice little two-day, two-day adventure. Yeah, I don't think I'll uh, do it again though. Right, just gonna walk down into Farnham now and the station. Maybe stopping off at the pub on the way. And uh, I'll see you there. So we're just taking a massive wrong turning. Come out too far west. So yeah, at least another K to add. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not retracing my steps. Poor quality walking anyway. I'm just gonna shortcut to the to rejoin it. Um, the irony is I took a wrong turning earlier, which like I missed the turning and it just put me on the main road into Farnham. I might as well have just done that now. So anyway, I'm approaching Farnham from an unexpected direction. So while I'm on the subject of wrong turnings, just to reiterate the, uh, the way marking on the way in to Farnham is poor. Very much poor in comparison to the rest of the trail. That's how I took the wrong turning. It may be right on the bit I missed, but it already done its done its damage by then. Um, the way marking on the trail generally is actually pretty good. You do have to look in hedges sometimes uh, because of just overgrown. Here we are. Finish. <laughs> 